Yeah. And uh, they, they pretty much worship it. Um, and I forget what the religion... Did they ever bring up what the religion's called in this? Did the mutants ever bring it up? No, they don't, but it's very much based off of the Christianity idea right. because they're washing right. yeah. it. They're in a church. Right, yeah, it, it's, it's church pews. It, it's not a temple or anything. It's a church. Mm-hmm. Um, and, the, and the nuclear bomb is almost like a rosary. Yeah. Um, and it, that scene is truly frightening. The scene they where they're the worshipping the bomb. Yeah. And when they take the masks off. Yeah, which honestly, that is a great comment on human society. Or no, just the human existence at that period of time during 1970. Right. Yeah. How they're worshipping the bomb. Because right. a lot of us were looking at... No, go on. Nuclear weapons ruled the world at that period in time. Yes. You have nuclear yeah. bomb considered a world superpower. Yeah, and so they were looking at the bomb as just what, what how we look at nuclear missiles now, just dramatizing it a lot. Right. As as a, because uh, as much as nuclear weapons are bad, and of course this is what the Godzilla series covered, so we don't need to get into it here. Um, they really did keep the world in order. And isn't that what God is supposed to be? He keeps the world in order, or the right. universe in order. And, and therefore, it's, it's a great choice that they worship the bomb. Right. Exactly. Um, and that's one of the things that pissed me off about battle, but I don't think we should get into that yet. Um, yeah. They completely fucked this idea over. Yeah. Um, and... Director's I, I, Cut I, does uh, it even worse. Huh? The Director's Cut of Battle for the Planet of the Apes does it even worse. I haven't seen that version, so I don't... Oh, I'll like tell it. you when we get to it. But, um... You want to talk about the, the mask thing? Because I, I almost think that that's some commentary on something, but I was wondering if maybe you knew, because I, I can't really put my finger on it. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, go ahead and state your opinions on... Because, honestly, that scene scared the shit out of me when I watched that as a kid. Oh, I didn't expect it. Me um, neither. And it looks so good! Yeah, and like when um, they're looking, when they're taking the masks off of their skin, it literally off of their um, faces. It literally looked like skin. Oh, it did. Um, and I, I think I know why they did that. You know, when you go to church, and I'm not a very religious guy myself, but just just for the just for the sake of being open here, since we're talking about a very kind of uh, personal and controversial topic, I am a Christian. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a Roman Catholic. Um, I'm not a huge religious guy. Um, but I gotta, gotta honestly say, when you go to church, you become just one of the crowd. You don't really stick out. Right. Um, and I almost think them wearing masks and all looking very similar, very plasticky and all wearing these helmets that cover up their hair color. It's almost like whenever they're in church, they lose their identity. Um, yes. But then there's that always that moment when they take the mask off and they're like, this is what this bomb has made us. And this is what it has chosen us to look like. So we've got to do it for one moment. And it's almost like that point in church where you go, peace be with you and also with you. Yes. Because they all do it at the same time. Which, may I just say, the leader of that bomb civilization, he has a great voice, too. Yeah. I don't really remember it because I haven't seen the movie in a while, but yeah, he, I think... I, what are we to going to do, sir? And then all of a sudden he turns to, to the man who asked that. He says, everything necessary. And right. then it cuts yeah. to the yeah. apes marching again. Right, right, right. Um, this movie is, definitely isn't as full of social commentary as the first one, but it does have its moments. Right. Um, and, you know, it, it's a little more brainless in that it's just... It, the, 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 this movie was made to turn out a profit. Yeah. Um, and it's a little more brainless, but as we pointed out, there is no such thing as an original... In the original five is a brainless pilot of the eight movie. Yeah. Because the movie still made me think. And right. believe it or not, I actually lost sleep because of that ending. Really? Because I could not stop thinking about it. Alright, you want to go into a little more detail about the ending since we've gotten to that point? Uh, the ending where Taylor blows up the world. Right. We've already touched on it, but I just wanted to say that um, Taylor is one of the most cynical characters I've ever seen in the medium of film. Um... And just the fact that he kind of accepts that he's a human and that humans are not perfect and that the apes are not perfect, I think that's why he does it, why he blows up the world. Um, almost like he can't take, take it anymore, you know? Yeah, and what I love about the poster is it says, who will prevail, ape or man? 
and it's neither. It's neither. There is no way to win that argument. Um, it's almost like as long as they're together and they're both intelligent, they're going to keep one's going to keep re- revolting over the other. It's like Until there can they, only be one dominant species. Right. And Taylor just ends it. Yeah. Ends the struggle. And that's what he was supposed to do in the first movie. And he finishes it here. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, the only way to really end the Planet of the Apes series would be to blow up the world. Right. Because you would have to end class struggle, and that's not possible. Exactly. Ultimately, I, I always say this to people whenever we're talking about politics. The only way you could ever end political debate was if you everyone is if everyone got the same amount of money every day. Right. And uh, everyone had the same amount of money. That's the only way you could end it. And that's not... It's the same thing as uh, giving the apes and humans similar uh, social status, which they tried to explore in battle, but they didn't really do it very well. Um, and it's not possible, because they just keep warring with each other. Mm-hmm. One will always want power over the other. It's not possible. Exactly. And the only way to, and the only way to fix it is to blow is to kill both species. Uh-huh. Um, so, you got anything else to say? Because I pretty much said everything I want to say. Exactly. And I guess the last thing we could do, talk about for Beneath the Planet of the Apes is, what would you give it out of five? Um, you know, I do actually like this a little bit better than Conquest. I'm going to say that. I find it a little more entertaining, so I'm going to give it actually a three out of five. I am going to give it a 4 out of 4, because the, the only reason why I give it 4 out of 4 is because I lost, again, the ending made me lose sleep. Okay. And it, it made me think, uh, it has its issues, like it's not a perfect 4 out of 4, but it was good enough that I thought it deserved better than 3.5 out of 4, or 3 out of 4. Sure. Um, you know what, actually I'm going to give it a 4 out of four. Four to five, actually. I'm going to change that. Um, my only issue with it is the fact that it's a lot of it is rehash. A lot of it is rehash, but the last act totally makes makes up for it. Right. So you know what? Yeah, I'm going to give it a four out of five. Um, only because some of it, so much of it is really thought provoking, and it does do a lot that's different from the first movie. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say. All right. So I, on to Escape from the Planet of the Apes. An ape film that is either loved by people or extremely hated by people, and I'm one of the people that loves it. I'm I'm in the middle. I don't love it or hate it. Um, because I just love the idea on how it's reversed. Right, yeah. Um, and starting this thing right off the bat, the movie opens in the same way that the first movie opens. Um, apes, instead of Taylor, crash, and they're thrown in a, in a zoo, quote-unquote. Yeah. Um... And I love that first shot of the apes taking off the helmets. And, and the uh, humans are like, what the fuck? <laughs> also, big plot hole again. What the fuck? How did they fix the ship? I don't know. Well, that's... Because you don't see Cornelius and Zira after that scene with them and Brent. And so it, what they were doing was there was an expedition into the uh, Forbidden Zone and Milo finds the ship fixes it somehow, and the explosion sends them out in space. But I don't know why they would think to do that, though. Because they need because Fox needed money. For real? Yeah, okay. That's right, why the movie was made. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I, I rest my case. It's a humongous plot hole. But um, it, I still love the movie. The thing is that it's the funniest of all of them. Yeah, sure. and many people compare it to Star Trek IV The Voyage Home because sure, the last sure. two movies were dead serious and depressing, but then all of a sudden four is really funny and lighthearted. This is yeah, the case in this, except the ending is very dark, and in my opinion, the most tragic ending out of all of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Because that ending, uh, it, it got me choked up a little bit. Because I love the character Cornelius of Cornelius and Zira so much. Yeah, it's a reverse. It's a reverse Taylor. Um, the humans become the apes and persecute the apes because they're threatening their society, just uh-huh. like the apes. In the yep. first movie. Um, and I love, I love also the fact that the, the humans are just scared because they almost, they almost think that um, and the president brings this up, brings this up, that the humans might do a better job than they did. Um, and the president doesn't seem to care. Um, but he's like, oh, it's 3,000 years from now. Let's just not worry about it. Let's go have some beer. Right. Um, 
And uh, I also love Cornelius' line, and this really doesn't have anything to do with what I've been talking about, but I'll bring it up in a minute, why I'm bringing it up. You know when they're at the boxing match and Cornelius just goes, well, because the two guys are like, what do you think, Cornelius? And he's like, it's barbaric. Yeah. And he's just sitting and down. That's the point where I'm like, this is why the apes kind of do a better job at ruling the world than man, than man does. And I think this is what really scares that professor dude who, who's, whose name escapes me. Um, yeah. The, it's that he, he thinks they will do a better job. Um, but yeah. he doesn't want to believe it. Yeah, and there was a scene where they're first introduced to the talking apes to the, to the general public of the world. And uh, Zero goes, in my uh, studies... No, no, no. In, in my time in uh, a laboratory, I dissect. I've studied and examined many humans. And she's right. about to say dissected. Right, I love that scene too. And at first I didn't really pay any attention to it, but then they bring it up later. Right, in, the, in that interrogation scene where he gets her drunk. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. It's when he drugs her. Because he, when he gets her Yeah, drunk, he drugs her. He doesn't get her drunk. Well, he does in one scene, but that, he, he gets different information out of her. Yeah. Like, in the first, in, uh, in the scene where, um, he gets her drunk. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not that he gets, he gets the year out of her, and, um, he gets what happens to the world. Yeah. That it's blown up with a nuclear explosion. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because the apes didn't blow up the world. But the, but the professor uses that against them. Um, it was Taylor who did. Yeah, it was a human that did it. And uh, he does, he doesn't he leaves that out. Yeah. Because well, you know also Zero doesn't know that because she wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Um. You know the thing about Escape is that it's a lot of comedy, but I also love Star Trek Four, so I think I'm gonna kind of go lighter on this movie than I was going to. Yeah. Because I, I love Star Trek Four. I know. Me too. There be wares here. <laughs> oh, yeah. my favorite line of the movie. And I one damn that. minute, Admiral. <laughs> oh, well. What? Enough about Star Trek Four. Um, yeah. Yeah. The movie... I, I just plain old love... Um, what was I going to say? Uh, Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Because there's this one scene where Zero is trying on human clothes. And Cornelius is wearing a suit. And he's sitting in the car waiting for Zira, and then all of a sudden everyone, like, surrounds her, and then separates, and she's wearing a cloak. And all of a sudden, uh, Cornelius is just like, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden she, like, takes it off, and she's wearing this new uniform, and he's just like, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. you know, that just shows the power of those two actors, that you can clearly understand what they're going through, and, like, at that time they were joyous. At, at that time, they were joyous, and just watching them, the makeup, oh, I just love how um, they were able to show so much, so much emotion through so much makeup. Right. And of course, this movie saves a lot of money because... Yeah, because of that, yeah. Apes. Three apes of makeup. Um, you know, Cornelius, Zira, and then of course there's the one who dies in the beginning, Milo. And from what I've heard... Milo actually is a reverse, is um, just a, re a reuse of makeup of Galen from the first movie. It is, yep. And also, yeah, they also don't use it, they don't have a close-up of him, so it's definitely possible. Yeah. Um, I also love the first scene where um, the scientists are testing uh, Zero's intelligence, and she just, like, fucks them over. I know, I love it. And then she's like, I love bananas. bananas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, and then the, the girl's just like, oh, I... I gotta, I gotta sit down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and again, it's like the scene in the first movie where Taylor says, get your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty apes. Yeah. Which... It's that, oh, it's that holy shit kind of moment. Yeah. And what I love, and it's just like in uh, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, the first two acts are pretty much the same, but then there's the last act, where humanity turns against the apes. Right. And kills them. Right, 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 right. Which is one of the, in my opinion, it's the most tragic ending. Because I love Zira and Cornelius enough to really care about them when they are killed. And the two and humans that love the apes are powerless to do anything. Same thing, of course, with uh, Taylor in the first movie. Yeah. Again, it it totally it, of is. Of course, Taylor lives. 
Oh, that that ending get just gets to me so much. Yeah, I, I don't like how they killed Cornelius because I don't like the way he looks when he dies. 